Okay, you guys remember when I said we were gonna do something about this pilot? And this is the most maligned part of the AHM C liner. They had this giant pilot and a couple of protrude out here. So I've been doing some homework and I know what the pilot is supposed to look like in general. It's supposed to be kind of flat across. And what, what I said is I want to fabricate one, which means we have a fabrication situation. And I want to bend out of metal. This here is an oyster tin. Smoked oysters come in it. This is a good bendable metal. So I like to eat these and then I save these tins because the metal is easy to work with. Okay, so I was thinking I'd just take one and I'd cut her down, take a ball peen hammer, smash it out, uh, flatten it, cut out the piece I need and bend it into a pilot. But as I was doing that I noticed it's got this cool piece here in the end. See right here? I was thinking, yeah, wouldn't it be neat if that worked just perfect for a pilot? So, obviously, I tried it. And this is what I came up with. Okay. I think that's totally acceptable. Now, I don't want it to look perfect, and I don't care if it's prototype. Remember, I'm not a prototype modeler. I'm trying to make this thing look as cool as I can with what I've been given, and I don't really want to put any... I'm not going to buy any details and stuff for it. I'm going to try to fabricate everything. So, that's what I did, is I bent... I bent that piece and epoxied it on here. And I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out. Once it gets painted, it should be decent. Now, the other thing I, in my research, I found an engineering diagram of this because I couldn't figure out what this hole was. There was a black cap on here. In the engineering diagram, this is called a grid exhaust. And my research tells me a grid exhaust is meant to reduce um, oil misting. I thought, oh, it must be the fan for the air intakes. But no, it's an exhaust for oil misting, and it's supposed to protect turbocharger. I don't know if this had a turbocharger. But um, I felt like it needed to have a, a grid in it. And I don't know if you can see, I put... I put a piece of window screen in there. Yes. Literally, I cut a piece of window screen and I just glued it in there like that. If you can see that. And I, I kind of like the way that turned out. Um, if it was too small, if I used that scale screen, you'd never really be able to see that there was a screen in there. And so that's what I did with the other one too. Now, let's get, let's get down to business. First thing we got to do we got to get this pilot off here. Okay, to do that, now yes, I have a milling machine over here, but I don't need to do that. I can take these cutters. These are just some, some cheap uh, flush cutters. You get them at Walmart for a couple bucks. Um, I don't like to use my Zuron cutters that I use on a rail. Uh, these cheap ones, I don't care what happens to them. So I'm going to try to cut, I'm going to try to cut and keep this, this edge right here. You see that, see that little edge right there? I'm going to try to cut around this, keep that edge. And I'm going to end up filing off this little coupler pad here. So let's see. And I don't have to get it exact. Problem is with this, this plastic one, it's old, making it somewhat brittle. So I'm going to rough cut it away first, then I'll come back 
Oh, there goes a piece. I'll come back and I'll trim it up more. And I'll use a file. Ooh, that was a close one right there. See, when you do this, you can end up splitting right into the shell that you want to keep, and we don't want to do that. So let's just start trimming it roughly away. Oh man, I got pieces going everywhere. Okay. Now, let's get this trimmed away. Now this coupler pad, I'm not going to trim that because I know what will happen if I try to do that. So what I'm going to do with that. Alright, give me one second here. Feast your eyes on this for a second. I'm going to take this over the grinder. And I'm going to quickly grind down that part. Got it off. Use the grinder. There's my rough cut. So now what I'm going to do... Oops, let's take the tape roll back. It's always good to have a tape roll on your workbench because it makes a great spot to do stuff like this. I need to file this flat. And there's no reason to use the Dremel tool or motor tool on it because this it files nicely and I don't want to risk making a huge error this edge just a little bit. Just kind of smooth it out with this part. Alright, close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. And the reason it doesn't have to be perfect is it's going to get covered up with our metal lip here. Alright. So, I'm going to take this. Take my metal cutting scissors. Now, you're going to need probably two different kinds of scissors to do this. This one will cut straight through just like paper of, of the part that is not folded over. To cut the rim, use either a bigger cutter or you can, you can use these. I'll show you how to do that. Let's get it across. See, it has these neat ridges in it. I want to sort of keep those if I can. I want to keep as much of them as I can. And we will have to get it to the right height. Now, the way I did that was I took the trucks from the B and I put them in the frame and then I, I matched it up on the track to my height gauge. Alright, now there's a rim around here. I want to keep that because that gives me a surface to glue to. However, see this gold stuff? That is some kind of non-stick surface. So I use a little needle file and I rough that up. So, as you can see, it's going to sit on here like this. And I'm going to have to bend it around and then cut it off. This is the tricky part. So first, the ridges here, there's one, two, three ridges. I'm going to line it up on the middle ridge Try to put that right in the middle. And to make this bend, I'm going to put a couple just cuts. Just cuts like this. That helps make it more bendable. And I can take my needle nose here.
If I bend that away, I can now do some forming. I can shape it in. Let's get out the big guy. I'm just going to eyeball it. See what kind of a good fit I can get. Okay. Now I need to make some more. Let's uh, mark these. And I don't care if this gets dented up. The more, the more dented it is, without getting totally deformed, the more real it looks. And one of the things. One of the things I look for when I'm doing this is what is called the Uncanny Valley. And the Uncanny Valley, it's something that guys who do cartoons, animators, are well aware of. When you make things look super real, in miniature or in cartoons, they become make some, a couple of more cuts here and we're not trying to get rid of the ledge we're trying to keep it but the uncanny valley um, it uh, kind of things that are too real are repulsive to the eye that's why in Take a, a movie like The Incredibles. The bodies and the things, are, they're distorted. And people find that more interesting. And if one example that is not so good. There's a, one of the final fantasy movies had this ultra-real people in it. I mean, you could literally see when they breathe, hairs on their face moving. And that was, that was um, somewhat repulsive. So I'm okay with this. It's not going to, it's not going to be prototype. What it's going to be is just plain cool for the sake of being cool. Get my ledge straightened out here. That's what we want to be, is just cool for the sake of being cool. Okay. So if you want to bend that in. Yeah, there's a bunch of sharp edges on these. That's okay. We're going to round them off on the grinder later. But for now, we can form. See how my cuts help me do the bends? If I can form this right around here. Stay kind of on my marks. <laughs> Time to get out this big flat, flat headed, flat nose pliers, lineman's pliers. Um, very good thing to have for bending. I have a bending table, don't need it for this. So if you have an etch mate, um, you want to save your oyster tins because on an etch mate, you can bend all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah, okay. It's a little beat up, not a problem. We don't mind that. 
We are almost a match. Just about a match here. The lineman's pliers can be used to straighten the pieces just by squeezing. I'm going to call this as good enough. That's all I need. Okay, now let's make a mark, cut it off. As I determined earlier, where the side should go is the edge of the little platform right here. That's how far I want it to come to. Alright, now, here's the thing. This double edge, scissors does not cut the double edge. So I'm going to snap it first, and I'm going to go down at an angle. Let's check it again. That is what I want. So now I'm going to cut it. Oops. Now yeah, we're going to cut it all right. I want to keep that shelf, so I need to cut the shelf. Well, I'm going to cut it, bend it out of the way since it's going away. Cut the shelf over here. Okay, now I'm going to, I guess I'm going to come up the side, outside. Give a slight angle to it. Gently. Okay, now I've got this piece here. Okay, that's what I want to work on. This piece fits on nicely at the top. Fits on just like that. Now what we got to do is we're going to take one of the bodies. We're going to take the dummy trucks, put it on the body. Okay. We're going to put the shell on the body. We're going to put it on the track. We're just going to eyeball this. We don't need to measure it. Um, okay. We need to cut off the bottom until we get it the right one. And we're probably going to make it do this in a couple of cuts because it's hard to get it straight across, especially when you're going around a corner on this thing. And like I said, it ain't going to be perfect. What this C liner represents is if an old sea liner was found, say, in the back of some, you know, out there in the dead line today in 2019 and was pulled in the shop to be ready for service, we would end up putting on a pilot out of whatever material we had on hand. There we go, that's the depth. Well, I can go off just a tiny bit more. Whatever we have on hand is how we repair it. That's how this shop operates. Some guy in the shop welds up a pilot. That's it, it ain't the original. It definitely ain't perfect, but it doesn't matter, it just has to work got to be serviceable. And that is what we are making. A serviceable pilot. And like I said, I'm not a prototype modeler. I'm trying to make this thing look cool just for the sake 
of looking cool as it is. So I don't even care if it's level on the bottom because once I got it on here, it's going to look beat up like it should on a locomotive of this age if it was still around today. Now, the next thing we got to do is how far are we going to go down? We need to cut an opening. See this? I got an opening there. That is going to be for the coupler. On these, the coupler protruded from the body, and there was just a cutout here. And that is what we're going to make, is a cutout. So I'm going to mark it, and I have a coupler right here, and I want it to be... Let's see, my center on my metal thing. Okay. So basically, i got to go between the two ridges. There's two ridges on here. Well, there's one in the middle, and then there are two, one on either side. Let's look at that again. I'm going to draw a line on this middle ridge because I'm going to draw a center line. Okay, there's my center line. All right. So I want to make a coupler opening. And my coupler, here's a number five. If I make the opening just between the two ridges, it'll be exactly what I want. So going up onto, onto the ridge just a little bit. And snap it. This one do gently. Very gently. There we go. Because I ripped the other one apart in half, and I broke it, but that's okay, because using a little scrap piece of copper, I super glued the copper on like a weld, weld it back together. Okay, now I already know that this one's got to go down pretty far. So where I made my two cuts right there. I'm going to go ahead and bend over my shelf on the inside since I'm not using it. I can make a better cut. Actually, I'm going to have to take, I'm going to take this down on the table and I'm going to push it down with my plate with my screwdriver. Okay, now I've got a flat spot where I can cut again. And I don't want to go all the way through to the bottom because I want to go pretty deep. Very carefully, I want to get there. Let's hope that I made the right choice. I'm going to bend it. Here's the thing. I need to bend this without snapping it off. So I'm take my needle nose and I'll push it over just a little bit just so I can get my bend started. I'm going to keep working it. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it's level. It, literally, it does not matter. So, and it doesn't matter if it matches either. So don't worry about that kind of stuff. And if you're entering this in a contest, then you can worry about it. Do we have a match is the question. We have a match if we can fit a coupler in that pocket and match it to the height gauge. Is it wide enough? Yes, totally wide enough. And I would say, I'm going to say that that looks like it, the opening is low enough because I'm going to attach coupler right under here on the frame. I'll make a little pad so that in the future when I have to take the shell off, I will need to unscrew the coupler to get the shell off, and that's fine. Now, what I want to do with this, this little piece hanging off here, I don't want to cut all of it off. I'm only going to cut part of it off, cut half of it off. Now this part here, I'm just going to bend it over with my needle nose here. 
Alright, I just made an extra detail on this. It's going to be, you're not going to readily notice it, but it just will add a little bit to it. Now i got to go behind. So we're done with this part. Okay, I got it now. Now I want to cut off my shelf in the back so that it sits on this rim here. That is, I'm going to glue it. And you're probably aware that that, that presents a problem, right? Because we're gluing metal to plastic. And this metal happens to also have a non-stick surface on it. But we can deal with that with, nothing, with a little needle file. It's just a little on the wide side. I just want to bend it in just a little bit. See if we got it now. Yep, that's it. Perfect fit. That's going to be our fit. If you can see that. Now, let's match it up again. Okay, let's go around and start trimming part of the shelf off. We want to keep some of it. Oops, let's flatten it. We want to keep it so we have something to glue to. That'll give us some surface area because we're going to use a two part epoxy. Alright, trim. This oyster tin stuff, and you know how many different things you can make out of bending this? Air conditioners on rooftops, fully bend them. You want to put a pilot, uh, what do they call that, the kick plate at the bottom of the pilot on a diesel locomotive, you can bend it out of this. And if it's a flat surface to a flat surface, you can super glue it really easy. But this one has to have more strength, so we are going to epoxy it. And we got it. All right. We got it. It's going to attach on like this. If you can see that. If you can see the shelf in there, it's not going to interfere with putting the under frame on it. Front side should look like that. And the top side it should sit in there just like that. That's actually, I actually really like the way this, way this looks. Okay, now what I need to do, I need to take this over the grinder quick and I'm going to smooth it. And I'm going to be very careful so that I don't break it. Because this grinder will rip it apart. And then I got to start over. And I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to smooth off. Just hit the sharp corners a little bit. And that ought to do it. That ought to do the trick right there. Okay, we've smoothed it off a little bit. So it's not sharp, and it's a little sharp on the, on the edge here, but let's just take our file. Oh. 
There we go. Okay, let's just take this off. Hit this sharp corner. Just hit a little bit. This stuff is soft metal. File wow, super easy. Yep. And this thing will now look this thing will look like it's got a bunch of wear and tear on it. And I think it should look kind of beat up. Okay, now what we need to do. Remember when I said this gold coating here is nonstick? Let's take our needle file, scratch it up. Make some deep scratches in it. In all the correct spots. The scratches give the epoxy something to grab onto. Okay. You guys always ask why are all the, why do you have all those nuts? Because you always need one, that's why. want to glue something. I need something to hold it in place. I got a whole bunch of them here. And yep, sometimes I empty the entire bench when I'm doing a bigger 